Thank you very much for that wonderful uh, introduction, uh, as well as to the introduction of this session. My name is Aliyah Qureshi, and as Dr. Collins mentioned, I'm a uh, minimally invasive foregut surgeon at OHSU, and uh, have just um, recently uh, started there. But first of all, I would like to thank the program committee, um, who are in part sitting there. Thank you, Jake and Arshna, for allowing us to have a session here today. I'd also like to thank Dr. Collins and Dr. Johnson for allowing me to speak here to you today. So the title of my talk is The State of, of DEI, The State of the Specialty, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Where do we stand and where do we go from here? I have no disclosures. So part one, so I've broken this into two uh, mini parts. Don't worry if it's not terribly long, but I will focus in the beginning about where I think we stand. And the second part will really be about where we need to go. I don't have a ton of data. I know the data is out there. I will refer you to some of the publications that I, I will speak briefly about. This is more of a conceptual uh, talk and, um, and happy to answer questions towards the end. So where do we stand with DEI? In 2022, there is no doubt that diversity, equity, and inclusion is pervasive. It is central. The injustices, the inequities that we have seen over the past years that have come to surface have helped us to see with great clarity the need for DEI. It has brought very sharply into focus the desire for us to do the right thing, the desire for us to right what has been wrong for so very long. And while I agree with Dr. Collins that we are making some progress, I also strongly agree that there is still so much work to do, and we are definitely faced with some real challenges here. So I would say to you that while we've done some work, there's definitely a long way to go. And with that, what I mean is there are a lot of DEI committees throughout the nation, and some of those are, you know, just to be really honest, they're, they're lip service, they're checking the boxes. And it's time to stop checking the boxes, it's time to start taking action. And I'll elaborate on that in just a bit as well. There are, ident there are identified structural uh, obstacles and barriers, and, and that, is, that data is really out there. It's starting to uh, become more prevalent and uh, more evident to all of us. And we have to keep looking at the data because as Dr. Collins said, as surgeons, we like data. We're driven by data. So we have to keep looking for that data. And I will talk more on that in a little while. So the challenge to us, there are really two challenges. One is to start taking action, to being accountable as DEI organizations and societies and committees. But the other challenge I would say to all of you here who are the choir, we need the people who are not in this room, who are all out there. We need to engage them because we're talking to the choir right now and I know a lot of you and I am grateful for your presence. But part of taking action, part of being accountable is getting those other people who are outside, getting them in here because they really need to hear this and they are not here. So others have spoken to it and I will say that Dr. King's uh, Carl's uh, lecture is a fantastic segue. I will not repeat a lot of what she said. It was a very moving lecture. I do hope you got to catch uh, most of it, if not all of it. And there definitely have been uh, attempts to improve diversity, and there's been an in increasing focus on getting diverse uh, members into our organizations. But that approach by itself, that's just not enough. We've got to think much more creatively. We've got to think a little bit deeper. What are the systemic issues that have brought us to this point where there's a handful of people in here and the majority are out there and we're talking about something that's so central that at the heart of surgery right now, it's at the heart of the nation. Where is everybody? I think this is something we've really got to think a little bit deeper about. 
And while some institutions have definitely started to include more diverse members, there really needs to be thought as to why some of those diverse members leave certain institutions. What are those factors that push people out or move them away? And we need to think more creatively about recruitment, retention, and promotion, especially of diverse members. So I think we all get it. We have a problem, and the problem's recognized throughout the houses of surgery. And I'll speak to that very briefly. Certainly the events of the last two years have brought greater understanding, have brought this very much into focus. The AAMC, the ACS, the American Board of Surgery, AAS, SAGES, SSAT, AWS, WLIS, all of the alphabet. <laughs> Surgeons can no longer ignore DEI. If you as an institution or organization are ignoring it, you're gonna have a problem. And surgical leadership throughout these houses of surgery that we all recognize have recognized this is a big deal. There's a central role of diversity, equity, and inclusion. The AAMC made it a priority for academic medicine to eliminate bias in all of its form, dismantle racism, advance equity, and again, we cannot ignore DEI. And they've put out statements, they have an excellent journal that you can find a whole series of articles on racism and the need for, for diversity, equity, and inclusion. The American College of Surgeons has really put some skin in the game as one of my colleagues earlier this week talked about. They enumerated five areas to focus on, just an inclusive environment, cultural competency, diversity in the workforce, public health research within the context of DEI, and advocacy and legislative reform. So what do I mean by skin in the game? Last year, the ACS held a conference on June 23rd, which I had the privilege of attending, when they spoke about, uh, it was really a multi-society conference where all the different uh, societies were represented and there were many breakout sessions. It was a really um, uh, heartfelt coming together about many of the issues. And then they actually put some money into it. They awarded multiple grants uh, that were quite competitive. And I believe uh, four of those uh, ended up, um, there, there were multiple applications and there was a subset that were selected, the highest ranking, and these have been given out. And I'm delighted to say that our committee, the DLPD, did receive such a grant, and I will speak about this uh, briefly. Also, the American Board of Surgery uh, also created their own internal retreat, talking about the impact of racism within medicine and surgery. They had a very structured retreat, focusing on racism for their retreat. They highlighted the macro and microaggressions endured by many African-American surgeons. And I would implore you to read this article. It's very well written, and it really speaks to the high cost of inaction and inertia, and the insults that were suffered by many of our colleagues. So what about SAGES? You know, what have we been doing on the DEI scene? Where do we stand? Well, SAGES' approach, um, I would say, kind of was even before all of this became a thing. It started years ago, and DEI was already starting to integrate and weave its way. So it was before DEI really became uh, something on the national surgical agenda as it is today. And I'll speak very briefly about our DLPD, which is the Diversity and Leadership and Professional Development Committee. <laughs> Quite a mouthful. And uh, for those of you who are, um, have been in SAGES, I've gotten a lot of questions about how did, how did that come about and how was this committee formed? So I'll, I'll speak very briefly on that. It was under the leadership of Dr. Dan Jones, who had the genius to create a diversity committee in 2017, and under the leadership of Dr. Dana Tellum, the WRS committee was formed. Well, WRS, everybody was like, what's WRS? So WRS was a very heartfelt name, and it basically stood for We Are Sages. It was to be a reflection of our membership. It was recognized, though, that many people didn't know what WRS stood for, and so then it evolves to the Leadership and Professional Development Committee, the LPD. Well, that came out of Dr. Pryor's genius because she recognized that diverse members 
like myself, maybe didn't have the golden path, didn't get all the schooling to, to know how to lead a group forward. And this is a skill set. And Dr. King also spoke to this, that we evolve as leaders. We're not born as leaders. Perhaps some of us are, but not all of us. So this was Dr. Aurora Pryor's input. And Dr. Horacio Asman facilitated a very passionate discussion when he was president on the importance, highlighting the importance of diversity, both in name and in practice. Dr. John Mellinger, who is now our, our SAGES president, was executive liaison at the time and was engaged and empowered the DLPD to, to reach its potential, which we are still in the process of achieving. Dr. Pat Silla has been a tremendous mentor, uh, a great critic in a very positive, constructive way in helping us move our very ambitious projects forward. And our current president, Dr. Leanne Feldman, has made DEI a central component, uh, so much so that last year in November 2021, we had a retreat focused and centered around DEI out of which some amazing projects have been born. And I will speak to those very briefly. But it's really the membership of the DLPD that drive all of our projects and these amazing ideas that I am sure you're going to hear about, you're going to read about in years to come. And I have the privilege of leading this tremendous group. And, um, you know, the, just the ideas that came forward uh, two days ago, again, tremendous um, uh, forward thinking, innovative. And I will uh, briefly speak to that. Uh, in, in terms of the interest of time, uh, I'm going to move very quickly in terms of uh, <laughs> uh, some of the things that we have done, the climate survey, we surveyed our, uh, all of our committee members, we got excellent data, we were looking at our blind spots, and then we took that data to heart. It mattered what our membership wrote. We implemented those changes across the board. I hope that you're observing that our program chairs are doing an excellent job in choosing their speakers, a uh, diverse group of speakers, a diverse executive, if you look at our executive membership, and there was a need for transparency, and SAGES has committed to that, in particular with relations to promotions. But it is still, there is work to be done, and we have taken this to heart and continue to take this to heart. So where are we going from here? So I have 40 seconds left, <laughs> and I will give you really the gist of this, what I want you to take home in terms of um, the most important thing is that we need to empower DEI. We need to drop the window dressing. We need to drop the check boxes. We've got to start getting the work done. And that's what our committee has focused on within SAGES, but also our committee is looking to branch outward. Action, accountability, and getting beyond just the lip service. DEI is ubiquitous. If that's not come through in, in the context of my talk, then I, I've not been um, doing this well. Some of the projects that we have, I'll very briefly, and that's the committee just this past Tuesday, um, a white paper, which is really a mission statement, our second iteration of the climate survey. Um, let me see. So the white paper is a current state. Uh, and where our trajectory is going. That's already been approved by the board and will be published. Our climate survey, Dr. Raquel Benno, second iteration will be in fall. Uh, FLD program, so this is one of the American College of Surgery grants that we are um, very grateful for. It is under the work of Dr. Jenny Shao and Julianne uh, Bing Bingener. Uh, tremendous work building an FLD curriculum, Fundamentals of Leadership Development, that will be centered, uh, have at its integral component, DEI. Dr. Rushir Puri, who is part of our uh, accountability, a part of our taking action, he's building a, de we have built a demographic survey. The first email has gone out. I would encourage all of you to answer it so again, we can really build that data. Dr. Shanita Johnson, who is uh, co-chair of the session today, has a tremendous um, and very exciting, innovative, uh, and ambitious project uh, to really uh, create a mechanism to evaluate leadership, educational initiatives, culture, as well as the uh, bylaws of any particular organization. So creating a DEI index through in, in a very uh, all comprehensive way to look at maybe your institution. Certainly we're gonna start with SAGES and kind of grade in some ways and, and give feedback. It's not meant to be punitive, but rather informative. So that is also well underway. So with that, um, I will just leave you with the thoughts and I apologize um, that I'm slightly over time. 
The real message here is that diversity, equity, and inclusion across the board needs to be empowered. We need resources, we need funding, we need to move this forward with action and accountability. And just in our meeting on Tuesday, one of our members who's uh, very integrated into the American College of Surgeons just dropped that there are a lot of funds, like in the arena of hundreds of millions of dollars, because the American College of Surgeons wants to move this forward. So we need, all of the people in here need to be thinking about how we can move this forward and think about uh, opportunities for funding in creative and lateral ways. So with that, I do hope that I've given you a sense of where we are now and where we need to go. I thank you for your time and grateful for the opportunity. Thank you.